I want people to know that you're welcome here. And I want you to know you can be just as successful and don't put the fact that you're a woman or young or whatever it is as a limitation on yourself to start what you want to do. You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries, a community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Blossman. Buckle up for the ride, Femcanics. Sarah Morrison is in the driver's seat today. Sarah is a volunteer worker and an award-winning businesswoman. She is the president of Baja Forged and the vice president of LGE CTS Motorsports. When she was 16 years old, her and her sister launched a website called CustomTruckShop.com, and it took off, further advancing her interest in the aftermarket world. And in 2017, she won SEMA Businesswomen Network Woman of the Year. And in 2021, Sarah went on to win the prestigious award presented by SEMA called Person of the Year. Listen to this story as Sarah shares how she hustles to get to the top. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B coming to you, and I have Sarah Morrison in the hot seat or driver's seat today. How are you doing today, Sarah? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so much for having me on today. Oh, are you kidding me? It is my absolute honor, sister. I had the blessing of hanging out with you and your sister last year at Seaman. Can you believe it's right around the corner already? <laughs> I know. I feel like we were just there. <laughs> and I'm already I, like, what? <laughs> I'm I, seriously like I blinked. I'm like, holy mackerel. It's right around the corner. How, when did this happen? <laughs> I had interviewed Teresa. I got to know Teresa. And she talked about you uh, during the interview, but it was interesting to me how the two of you have, like, you're in the same business, in the same industry, but yet you're in two different areas of specialization in your zone of genius. You, both of your zone of geniuses are in different spaces and it's way cool. And until you get to know both of you, it's like, I don't know, it was a mind blow for me. And how much, how much you can be alike and yet how different and your siblings, right? Right. I mean, I know this, I, I have two kiddos. My brother and I are very different, but it was just really neat to get to know Teresa and then get to know you and then uh, meet your, meet some of your family as well. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. My, my family is always very involved. And honestly, like with my sister, I think it's, it's, it is a lot of people going, Oh yeah, like I know your sister, and they think that we're pretty much like identical. Um, we're like the same person, and like truthfully, we're like the furthest from <laughs> anything like each other at all. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah. it's cool. It, it it's it was fascinating to start to observe both of your zones of geniuses and how they complement each other, and how yeah. ultimately it helps your company be the success that it is. And those types of things I'm so intrigued by the psychology and the basic mindset and practices around successful business. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into a lot of that, but (laughs) before we get into there, I, you've had a lot of articles written on you, sister. You have, I mean, she, You won person of the year last year. I had the opportunity of watching that interview when you were on the uh, SEMA main stage. And Mm -hmm. those aspects are are pretty well documented. And I'm going to provide links where people can dig in and get to know you even better for those aspects. But the secret sauce around Femcanic Garage is getting to know Sarah. Right. There's those those pieces out there and getting to know Sarah and ultimately for women to realize and connect that we're all more alike than we are different. 
We right. even through successes, we all have challenges. But with the the era of social media and everything that we have, it's easy to beat ourselves up because what we what we end up seeing oftentimes is the end result. Right? We see your yeah. article in the SEMA magazine in Person of the Year, and it's like, wow. But what they don't see is the, is the true journey of getting there, and mm. the getting up when sometimes you don't want to get up when you get knocked down. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's the power and inspiration around all of this. I, I want to ask, did you always know you were going to be in this industry? And I don't want to be presumptuous and skip that question because I know a little bit about your history and that you grew up in this industry with your parents. But I'm still going to yeah. ask it anyway, because just because someone grew up in the industry or around the industry doesn't mean they always thought they would be in it. Did you always think you would be in this industry? Um, yeah, I did because, I mean, I always work. Well, I shouldn't say in the aftermarket side of it. I did know I wanted to be in automotive, um, but I actually thought I wanted to be on the body shop side because that's what my parents owned was a body shop. Um, when I started getting more into the aftermarket, uh, that's probably where I started to thrive more and um, understood it a lot better. I was more passionate about that instead of working with like insurance companies every day. Um, so I always knew I was going to be in the automotive. I just didn't know exactly that this was my journey or my path for sure. When you say aftermarket, what do you mean exactly by that? Yeah. So um, in automotive, there's lots of different segments. Um, when we say the aftermarket side, that's all the um, product that comes that doesn't come on the OE basically. So anything that is made and manufactured afterwards to accessorize your vehicle, whether it's suspension or bed lids um, from wheels and tires, anything like that is your aftermarket side. Yeah. And OE, just for, for those listeners, uh -huh. original equipment. So think of when your car literally comes off the, or comes out of the dealership, what is yeah. on it. Well, let's back up. You and Teresa are in, in business together, right? Yeah. You and your sister. And not everyone can do that. What is it like being in a business with your sister? Like it's, as a sibling, not specific to Teresa, but just as a family and siblings. Um, it's definitely hard to be in a family business. Um, it's not only just me and my sister. I mean, beforehand, it was my mom and dad. And then me, my brother-in-law, and then my sister. Um, and then my parents retired. And so it was me, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Um, so we actually don't really talk about Jason too much, but Jason's still in everyday operations <laughs> and helps and out at the shop. Jason is... Oh, sorry. Jason is Teresa's husband. Yes. Just so... Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm following yeah. you, but yeah, I got you. Yeah. So he actually started working for our family business before me and Teresa did. When did you start actually working? So I started working at my parents' company when I was 13, just helping like answer phones and filing. And of course, like doing homework at work. And when I was 15, I actually started getting a paycheck. Um, so sometimes I say like, okay, 15, I started getting an actual paycheck and had more responsibilities. But um, at 16 is when I started customtruckshop.com. And that's when I started selling aftermarket accessories on the side because my dad was already building SEMA vehicles and a lot of them, a lot of the people would trade him product versus pay him uh, because we didn't have large budgets or anything. And I told my dad, oh, I could sell those online. So I just started on weekends going to car shows, swap meets, whatever, selling product, uh, started the website. And then um, so that's kind of how I got started on the aftermarket side. Hustling. 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 I, I, seriously. I mean, it, it, that's, yeah. that's hustling. So did you build the website yourself? Your first so one? my sis, my sister helped me with um, starting that kind of stuff because that's what she was actually going to school for was like graphic design. And um, that was more of her major. She was a machinist at that point. She didn't work for the company, um, but she helped me with all of that. And then I just put all the product on there and then, answered all the phone calls and the emails and that kind of stuff. But she helped me with the initial design and setup of it. Nice. 
What was next for Sarah in this journey then? Uh, it was funny because actually in uh, 98, right when I graduated, I was like, I'm going to go get a real job. And I went to go work for one of my dad's competitors, uh, which is a body shop down the street. And how did, I was how like, did that go over at dinner time? <laughs> <laughs> I met your dad and, and your dad, <laughs> I mean, he is, he's a competitor. He goes after things like I mad yeah. respect for him. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there in my head, like after meeting them and playing some spades with them and having some yeah. friendly competition with them. I'm like, I wonder what that dinner conversation was like. Um, I just told them that I wanted to get more, um, you know, world experience, see what it was like working for other companies um, before I decided to go be, because I wanted to be an insurance agent. So I said, I wanted to see what other body shops were like and things like that. He thought that it was actually a good idea for me to have that experience. And the guy that I went to go work for, my dad was actually friends with him, even though they were competitors. Um, and like I say, they were like friends that hung out, but they were very civil. And a lot of times um, they would work with each other on stuff. So I think he was pretty excited about me going over there. But I only lasted there like eight months, I think it was. And I was like, oh, I can't stand working for someone else. <laughs> so um, that was that like the, the bug where it's like, yes, I'm meant to be an entrepreneur. I'm not meant to be a air quote employee. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I think that was the part where I was like, man, I'm doing all of this. Um, and I love, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love working with teams. So I do love working with other um companies that one was just more of a I was like a secretary it was very I don't know it wasn't exciting right yeah. and and then I was like I could do this myself so I just I wrote a business plan up and I submitted it to my parents and they said I just want to do the truck shop like full-blown and they said okay so I started just working out of one of their bays um and then in 2001, I opened my own brick and mortar store. Did you ever come to a point in your career where you were like, I'm not sure this time I can get back up or if I want to get back up? And and I don't, I mean, from a, from a career perspective where it's like, maybe I, maybe my time here is up. Have you, did you ever feel that way? Actually, yeah, like probably about a month ago, um, I was literally at the point where I was like, you know, I'm done. I can't do this. I, you know, there was just a lot going on. And uh, I, other than that, not really, but like, that was probably like my biggest thing. And like, I finally had to um, tell myself like, what am I doing? No, this is what I love. Like, you know, you're just going through some stuff right now. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, Oh, you did, you know, you did win all these awards. You are doing all these things. And I go, yeah, but then I'm doing all of that stuff now. And, but I was still going through a lot of challenges and a lot of changes. And I didn't know how to adapt to those changes. And I really forgot about a lot of my core stuff that where I started from and how to like bring back myself to be like, okay, no, we had major changes the last couple of years. Right. So there was things we had to deal with. Um, I had health issues I dealt with a few years ago that I had to deal with. And I had to really think about where that sat for me um, professionally, you know, if that's what I wanted to continue to do or not do. Um, and I really had to tell myself like, okay, stop talking like that. <laughs> Get back into it. You're fine. <laughs> I'm Sarah Morrison, co-owner of LGE CTS Motorsports and Baja Forge. And I'm a Femcan. Hey, Femcanics. This is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. 
While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, we appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a femcanic?